This is the first round of Nogi Worlds last year. This is at Blue Belt. Uh, the process is a Blue Belt. Really cool stuff. He trains out of South Dakota, and let's get started. Great hand position. If Mike Baidu is still here, I do like this, especially if we don't know what kind of game the other player is going to play. Right side lead. We had two kind of guard pull options. It's interesting to see if, if process is going to pull right away here. Oh, we're going double cam. a boy. Yeah, so just with... Uh, notice the, the horns up, tail down here. This straight back posture means that this player is a wrestler, right? So we don't want to adjust to what they're doing too much, but we do want to always think about this chart of good tournaments is all about playing our A game and figuring out what the other player wants to do, denying them the ability to play it, and then bringing them back to where we need to be. And so if they are, are just showing us this posture, you can probably take some, some cues here that your, if you had a specific takedown game, maybe we look to pull if that's part of our A game. Good grip, head and arm throw. No, flying arm bar. Wow, okay. So, okay. I, this is a really fun spot. I believe the other player goes for a flying arm bar here. I have a huge problem, not problem. Um, I, I think we have an option here to go flying arm bar with the shin in. And then this one comes flying over the head. Look at his grips. The 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 reason why I do believe this was a flying armbar attempt is this grip and this over the top is just the classic armbar grip. And when we do it from standing, we can go for this armbar. Shin in armbars from the bottom should not ever work. How's that for a hot take? We need this foot across the body here. We need both legs here. Can we finish shin in arm bars from top? Yes, because the mat behind them means the other player can't rotate. But anytime you get arm barred from when you're on top, I'm talking from the process's point of view here. If you get arm barred with a shin in arm bar, so this leg, the player's left leg is going to come over the head, obviously. But all the process needs to do is just work his hips this way and get over the top of this knee and he falls into side control. And the other thing we can use from here a lot is that passing, that smash passing concept of tight, loose, tight. It's kind of similar to the what we were talking about with the previous match of you can't make people do what they don't want to do, but it's easy to trick them. If this leg came over, it looks like we're not even going to get there, but our elbow is extended. We can technically be armbarred from here. But what you're going to do is you're going to lose, use your body to push into the shin. He's always going to push back into you. And when he pushes back into you, then we take the perpendicular and just slide over the top of this knee right into side control. You should, you should never be, the bottom player doesn't have enough control to finish arm bars from the bottom in this shin in spot. I feel pretty comfortable saying that. I, I, I bet. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and you know why? Is because I used to do this all the time. From I saw it from side control. So I was this player. You get a bump and then throw that bottom knee in. And then instead of having this foot come in to connect to pull your head away to come back to guard, I'd always try to throw this leg over. And and you just you should get passed over the top of that knee every time. So let's take the positive side of that. Every time it happens to you, tight, loose, tight allows us to find the perpendicular rotation to get over the top of the knee. Mr. Main, good to see you here as well. Um, I think, and reading between the lines, and if process is here, I think where this fell apart, and this is just conjecture, right? Is that the right word? A blind guess here. Is that this player didn't get, no worries, man, really glad you're here. Um, and I'll send you a link of the video afterwards. This player didn't get the Jonathan-esque launch he was looking for. 
because process was pushing directly into him. It looks like he wanted to push off this, swing the shin in, and then fly over the top with the other leg, which again, I believe is not a good approach to the flying arm bar anyway, but it looks like the forward pressure here from process right here just kind of collapses everything. So it's more of a leg drag position. Good job feeling this process and getting your knee in. Clear the arm, and you're pulling the arm out. It's so tough to break down frame by frame jujitsu because if I'm breaking down faster than what you're feeling, then none of the feedback matters because you couldn't have changed it anyway. But all these pieces that we're seeing right in a row look fantastic. He comes over the top. He was already thinking about over the top. For here, I would not put my knees on the mat on these in-between positions. And this is one of my favorite spots as well. This is something we called, yeah, he went for flying arm row, was extremely stiff is what process says. Uh, I'm going to call you process until you tell me not to, because I think that's cool. Stiffness, especially in round one of a tournament, is super common. Um, but this pass here, and again, by the way, I'm from New England. I'm wearing a Julian Edelman football t-shirt right now. So um, I really like Bill Belichick. This for me, I call the New England Patriots guard pass because it should be done with such easy high level precision that you should be able to do it 99% of the time. And so when we just break it down to fundamentals and do the right, th the correct things right every time, that, that's a huge focus of the New England Patriots football team. This piece where they just, and it happens from side control, right? They're in side control, they bridge, they shrimp, they get their bottom shin in right here, boop but they freeze it and they're not able to pull their head away and get back to an actual playable guard. This is kind of a guard. What we need to do is not give him more room to rotate. When we put our knees on the mat, one, two, we anchor into the mat instead of the other player, which means we can't rotate and they're pushing off of us so he can rotate. So he can change this angle in between you to be able to square his spine up and come back to guard. So you really need to dig your toes in here and have your knees just off the mat. And it's the same tight, loose, tight, which makes sense, right? It's part of the process, Jonathan. I think I'm kind of doing it on purpose. Um, it's the same tight, loose, tight as that arm bar position. We need to be off our knees. Hips are pushing into the shin. We can't just run around because if we run around, he steals this momentum and inverts, and then the game continues, right? So we need to play tight, loose, tight. We push into the shin. They will have no choice. They always push back. They oppose it. And as soon as he opposes it, we can release the pressure and slide over the top of this name. Perpendicular is the name of the game. Here's his kneecap, tight, loose, tight. The tightness is filling this hip line. We're passing guard. We've passed the foot line. We're stuck on the knee line. Here's the hip line. Tight, loose, tight to pass the knee line. And then we're just going to take all the space away and lock his hip down. Do a good job getting up, but he was able to rotate. Boy, do we need this elbow just pinned to our side. We always need to have the elbow come in. Elbow comes in first. And then we externally rotate our hand. It's weird. When we want to grab something out here, we always just go get it. But this space is going to kill you. It's such a visual thing. His eyeballs are already staring at that. So if there's any light at all, he's going to punch over the top to the Kimura. We, we just, it's, it's a weird thing. We just have to get really used to painting our elbows in. And then if we need to go grab something, externally rotating our hands. Good job here, pinning this down. If he does get the Kimura, we can rotate to that side, pop the head out. Should mean we come to the other side. You choose to recede. Very okay with that. Amazing camera work, by the way, man. This is so, so cool. Same thing. Open guard, no connections, plenty of strategies from here. The ones I think are the most common and most effective are front headlock, snapping the head down picking the feet up to make them change position and put their back on the mat. And these are really good pairs. If you 
start pulling the feet up, his hands come down, his head comes forward, and then popping his head down is easier. So these are kind of a binary pair. And then in good like game board theory, not game theory, but game board theory, like the power of threes are important, rock, paper, scissor, if you will. Uh, you're pulling this, you're picking this up. If he's so focused on denying these two things that can happen interchangeably, we can step in the bucket and start knee cutting. There's nothing, this is not fencing. There's nothing that says we need to stay on a straight line as well. You circle, make him put a hand down. That means his rhythm is chasing yours. It means he's not playing offense. I love this. He went from the head to the feet, pick it up. And now we're in. Cool, really good stuff. I think this is the moment I, I froze to use, uh, when I make like the Instagram posts, I just kind of slide forward and choose a random spot and I just move it around until it's a shape that's easy to draw on. But I think this is maybe the exact frame or within a second of, of what we made that Instagram story out of. Kind of similar to Jonathan, the first match that we watched today, that this space happens because you're stiff. And stiff means strong for sure because you're strong but this space, the rule is, and we talked about this a lot in Paper Cutter University, uh, the online instructional I made last year, there's a certain understanding that happens all the time. The person on top wants to maximize weight and minimize space, always, unless they have a really good reason not to. The bottom player wants the opposite. The bottom player wants to maximize space and minimize weight. That is the, the rule in any dominant position. So not guards, but here you're, you're trying to pass, right? So you need to minimize this space. This space occurs because you're stiff and your spirit animal in this moment needs to be a trash bag full of molasses. You need, I think we're knee cutting. We're either knee cutting or stapling or long stepping. And I think the feedback is the same. This forearm grip to the inside is great. You take the center square of the chessboard, so he probably can't get his knees back in, but you can't pass from here. You've got to get hip to hip. We do that by smearing it, kind of relax and sink in. If he really overextends here and says, I'm going to push your shoulders away, you can either let this connection, if I draw you, here's your head, shoulders, spine, leg, leg. If you are stiff here and he's pushing on the shoulder, all of you is going to move backwards. We're just going to fill in this space, all right? And if we fill in this space, then he's got more room for his legs to come in. Bag of sand theory or trash bag full of molasses theory is if he pushes on this, you relax it and let it get out of the way and your hip fills this space. If he's really focused on driving this knee in and blocking your hip, then we relax the shoulders, come over the top and cross face and walk around. It's so tough because this is like happening really, really fast. But knee cutting specifically, if you watch high level knee cutters, JT Torres did a video, I think with Bernardo, of how he enters knee cut from butterfly. I'm not 100% of that, that's off the top of my head. but. When you watch him knee cut, look at the space between his hips and their hips. We focus so much, if this is knee, uh, knee cut, and I don't even know what's happening next, but if you're looking to take this kneecap and put it on the mat over here for knee cut, as soon as the knee's down, this hip should sag in and touch his hip. With JT, there's no room. When we're stiff and our hips are floating up here, is when this leg knee shield comes in, right? We need to relax into that space, even as something as like powerful as knee cut, right? We need the knee down so he can't bring the bottom leg in, duh. But what a lot of people don't really explain is that like every other guard pass, foot line, knee line, hip line, we need to get our hip on their hip so they don't have room to push and get the knee back in and then invert or whatever. Um, that said, we're talking about a freeze frame. Uh, Mr. Process, first, yeah, cool. JT Tours is awesome. He used to train with us at Clockwork every Friday. Is an amazing guy, one of the best. And I was just on a podcast last week with 
main from grappling rewind if he's still in the chat i'm pretty sure he said jt might be the like one of the no gi goats main am i am i quoting you correctly um i think you said that he hasn't lost a no gi match in like x number of years or something but like his he's such a good competitor and he's such a good teacher and those little things are are the space between that is tough to teach in technique. You, you need to just melt into this space. It's a concept, not a technique. Anyway, that's enough on one single frame of a five minute match here. Come in. Yeah, see how stiff you are? There's still space in between here. This knee sells you out every time. Um, we see bigger people do it all the time. They look for balance and so they put their knee down. But regardless of if it's only 10% of your weight and power, that's 10% we don't have to spare. We have to, you know how when you see good knee cutters and this leg is always like posted out here, it can be part of the technique, but it doesn't need to be part of the technique. It's just understanding that you cannot connect to the mat. You need to connect to them. The goal is hip on hip. It looks like he has his knee in. So if we're going to change directions, this is different, but it's really tough to change directions when your knee's on the mat anyway. So I hope all that makes sense. Great short underhook. I do really like this, having the forearm chop to really control where he is. It, it's like right of first refusal. You have the ability to punch the underhook, the proper deep underhook, whenever you want. Jonathan, if you're still on, or for everyone else, this is a good shot of the concept we were talking about before. In this moment, his opponent wants to be more vertical with his shoulders. He wants to be more unflat, right? Process's forehead is right here. If this player lifts this shoulder up, Process is going to feel it and smash him back down. The only way, not only, the easiest way for this player to get his shoulders vertical is to keep this shoulder where it is and suck the shoulder underneath. And I think we kind of see it. Notice, see the squidge, and now his shoulders are vertical. Process's head is still directly connected to the shoulder, but now that everything is vertical, it's really, really tough. Other player's arm is in a weird spot. He's got to get it back inside. You have, like, head and arm choke possibilities. But really, and, like, unless this is a more established half guard that I can't see the legs on, I think this should still be off the mat. I'm a bigger player. That might be personal preference. I can't see the whole picture here. Yeah. Um, might be throwing good money in after bad to steal a weird finance term. Now you're putting your knee on the mat that's also on his arm. So it's easy to think, oh, now that my shin's on his arm, he can't have his arm, and that's good for me. I'm taking one of his weapons away, although that might be true. And there are positions where we staple arms. The other way of thinking of that is, cool, now I have weight that isn't on his core because it's on the mat, and he has the ability to move my base out from underneath me. I, I think sometimes we see this staple help, and let's make up a really fun number, 70% of the time. This player gets to turn into a wrestler because you've given him underneath your base. This now can't move. He rotates around it and starts coming up on a single leg. Especially from here. Like it's 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 not a single leg because it's the old school sweep, but it's almost exactly the same thing. I would I would be kicking this back regardless of whether or not we put it there. Good job pulling back. I see your thumb here. We're looking for Dars process. If you have the um, connection and you're still in the chat, let me know if you purposely look at Dars a lot. I think that might be one of the reasons why we'd want to crowd because we want to incentivize them to roll up. If we're really going to focus our A game approach on this Darce choke. Uh, the more they extend their elbow here to try to roll up, the easier it is to clear the back of your thumb 
to the back of the neck, which is one of the pieces we're looking to do. The other way you measure is if you can put the back of your palm on their back here. So you need another inch. I'd love to see this head coming back this way to elongate that back arm, your right arm, if I'm reading this correctly. Cool. Bumped to deep half. In gi, I, I don't mind your leg position here underneath the head in Irina. I know. I want to train too. Um, in Nogi, I don't think we have the same collar attack options from here. In Nogi specifically, again, the point of perfect roll is for, not, for me not to like introduce new techniques, but try to find the pieces that we might be missing. But I think it's an easier approach to have this knee that's trapped, find the mat, have your chest face the camera, and step up with this foot instead. You take away a lot of the back take options from there. Um, instead, he gets to kind of play this Bernardo tip game for as long as he wants. There's the Bernardo tip. We're playing the hamstring up the middle, similar to what we were seeing yesterday for people who follow the stream. He tucks it in. This is great. There's a really fun, old-school, sneaky shoulder lock if you grab this wrist and pin it to your hip, and then you can get this foot across his body, and you just extend your leg, and you rotate his elbow. If this can't move, and my shoulder can't move, and you rotate this in, you can, like, Pete Williams-style lock his arm up with your arm. It's tough to do, but easier to escape if they run away, and you don't give up the the... The double unders. That said, not uh, not calling for the technique here. It's just a nice freeze frame to talk about. Going backwards is okay. I'd like to see more hamstring push here. You're doing a really good job finding and fighting the hands. He throws by. That's kind of wrestler-esque. We like it when they throw by because it gives us momentum to work with. This is okay. I think in the armpit is a better connection point because it's easier for you to shrimp and push off of it. You went to the hip instead. You might have kicked him in the face right there. I love that. Good square away. Now we're on offense. We need to be pulling. Yeah, so very similar. And Mr. Process, I, I'm not sure if you were able to see the first match, but in the first match, we had Jonathan doing like flying front headlocks. And one of the pieces of that that was so important is that we need the front of our shoulder to touch the back of our neck, their neck, pardon me, which normally means you need the shoulder higher than where his head is to be able to access that. Guillotines from closed guard with you flat on your back is not real. It's just not a real thing. He says, got to go, man. Excited to see the replay. Thanks so much. The pass I use for single leg X later. I learned from Galvao directly. See you guys. Thanks, man. This is awesome process. Thanks so much. I'll go a little bit quicker to make sure that we don't talk here for 18 hours. But this is a really fun match. Um, what you're doing here, just pushing on the neck, in my opinion, is, and maybe there are people smarter or better than me, totally fake. I, I put this, in, not totally fake, my bad. Not a real submission threat. I put this in the same bucket as Jonathan's no gi Ezekiel, where it can certainly cause them to react and, and open up stuff. Good stuff. Um, oh, Jonathan, maybe you're talking a process. Really good stuff. Um, getting a little bit of neck pressure here is probably going to make one of these arms fly in, um, and maybe that means he'll stop the double under or everything else. We might have had a triangle, which was better. Yeah, so we're in triangle instead. Um, but just know that you, you literally cannot guillotine if you can't get the front of your shoulder on the back of their head, which almost always means your shoulder has to be higher than their head, which means you cannot guillotine if you're flat on your back. Um, so this is just kind of a distraction. If we're going to triangle here, the big thing that makes this better is shipping your head this way so this shin gets a better chop to really control their posture almost every good early stage triangle escape is them getting posture or backing away with their hips right the more square we stay here parallel with the spines the less bite we get with this underside 
So from here, I'd like to see your head move this way so your knee can come in this space and the shin comes right across this space. It, very similar to the arm bar, step two of the arm bar, step one is we step on the hip, step two, the other one chops across the back. Um, Homolo guard uses this all the time, his spider guard of getting the head this way and chopping. From there, if he can't back away because you have a good bite with this calf, then this knee can come up and chop. Just a little housekeeping of controlling his posture before you just shoot your toes. Very square, understandable. We're visual creatures. Um, you want to like stare directly at the piece that's going on in front of you. But he just, he has control of his own shoulder height. We had a shot here. He drops down to a straight ankle. Good combo from him. Hand fighting is good. I think my favorite reaction from here is just switching sides. If he's really up the middle bicycle seat, this is fine going in between here, getting this hip down, this hand comes back. We technical stand up and we can get pressure through our foot that's being attacked. If we can get the entirety of the bottom of our foot on the mat with weight on it, there is no heel hook, even though there's no heel hooks here anyway, and there's no um, straight ankle locks. Uh, we discovered yesterday that I use the word foot lock for both toe holds and ankle locks. So I need to not say foot lock, straight ankle lock. Although if you get the entirety of the bottom of your foot on the mat with weight on it, they cannot toe hold you either. Here you're kind of floating. The more you go this way, the easier it is for him to rotate belly down, which is where his real power is. Good job getting your other leg in. You were pushing on this one to to get inside, very okay with it. Now you're climbing, I like all of this. Great job getting back to close guard. I think there are more better paths by going the other direction, but that could certainly just be personal preference and not best practices. Stall call into that. Yeah, and the good news is that, and we talk about this a lot on the channel, and let me go back. This spine posture is exactly what we want. We don't want him all the way smashed in. We don't want him all the way vertical. We want him on this in-between. This is where I, I'd like to see you higher up on the head because this spine posture of him at this 45 is where we can triangle and armbar and Kimura and guillotine and set up the push-pull for hip bumps and scissor sweeps. We're going armbar. I like two hands on the arm. I love Nogi specifically. Outside hand on the elbow and far side hand on the back of the head. Same thing, right? If he controls his own posture here, it's just difficult. I do like this, what I know it is pit stop position or like diamond guard, like jumping over the shoulder and closing your guard again because it prevents him from, from climbing up. But coming to the head first, means you're connected to him as you hop over that shoulder. And then the arm bar is easier from there. That said, good dexterity, this back bite is what's really connected to it. I think he might've stepped over too early. The other thing is we wanna, whenever we're putting weight through something, we don't want a ballerina toe. We want to peel our toes back towards our knee. It makes the knee ligaments stiffer, which means there's more weight hanging through him. We want to be connected only through him. You're not on the mat. It's a really good connection point. It'll get 10%, 5% stronger if you flare those toes back. And I said maybe you were too soon, but we might have the elbow. The one thing I'd want to correct here, not correct, comment on, is it looks like you're arm wrestling. What I'd like to see you do is pull your chest to his wrist. Pull the chest to the wrist so you can then wrap it and just pin it to your chest and then use the entirety of your core to extend his elbow. Even if it's two on one, when it's out in front of you, it's just, it's just harder to control and he's got more rhythm to move it around. If you can get your chest to it and then lock it on, 
it's a much stronger grip in my opinion. He's bailing. You're going to diagonal hip heist. Diagonal hip heist. Nice. So we got the advantage for the armbar, and we got the two from the sweep. Really good stuff. So single leg X. What's going on here? Weird flexibility by that guy. Um, you have not allowed him to step over. This is fantastic. Are we going to back step? Yeah, we are. All the way around. Cool. Very, very slick. Oh, I didn't touch that. So you've kind of like already highlighted this. This is great. Um, this is the Galvao piece. So denying it, clearing your knee line. Knee line's clear all the way through. Cross face is important. Good rhythm. Miss the cross face, but you do give him the hip to flatten him out. Love that. And we go right to mount. Atta a boy. What a good combination. He was just a little bit high with that far arm, kind of similar to what we were seeing in the Jonathan video. You try to create pressure with your arms instead of your legs. That is, I believe, the most valuable move in position. Uh, most valuable move in jujitsu. You just got three for the pass and four for mount. Uh, if you hang seven on someone in 10 seconds, it's really tough for them to win. That said, you never want to do the def uh Griffin was talking about the prevent defense um, in football, right? You just like don't do anything and back up and be like, oh, I'm going to try to prevent you from doing anything. Stay offensive for sure. Cool. We have had the video doctored. We're in like fast forward now. I assume that means there's not a lot of action, but that's kind of a shame because there should be action here, right? Looks like your knees are on the mat. Are they taking weight? No. I'd like to see more hip weight here. Your shoulders are a little too forward. Um, we want the shoulder coming forward when we have the cross face connection. It looks like you're just kind of floating over the top. This club hand over the top is good, but we want to use it in conjunction with an underhook to make sure we can pry the elbow. Lifting the elbow from here is okay, especially as he puts this underneath. That underhook is, is just a great option. We're cross-facing him like crazy. You, we, he's already declared which way he's going. Arm in Ezekiel is a weaker option here. I'd, I'd cross-face here and punch into this hole, and then you can just sprawl pop that back as you spider walk up and and you not only take away his strong side in terms of which way he wants to escape if we're in mount we probably look to go in one direction first 100 percent of the time maybe right um, if the other player takes that side away it can get more difficult that said Good job covering here. That is illegal. Looks like you went over the mouth. Um, certainly happy to be... Yeah, shh. <laughs> Referee didn't see it. Um, I am not an IBJJF expert, and I whine about them a lot. Pretty sure that's not legal. Um, that said... Love that you got away with it. One of my favorite positions to talk about, this is like what perfect, was it illegal at the time? Good question. Uh, I thought it was always illegal. Was there a moment where you were allowed to just smother people? Um, so this is one of my favorite positions to talk about. We have a decision here, and the more common sense, or not common sense, the intuitive thing to do, because we're visual creatures, is to turn towards the head. You wanna make eye contact with them. So this hip goes this way, you turn this way. You lose the arm bar almost all the time when you face the head. Whenever you're in what I call the headband position, when you've got some part of this touching the mat and you can roll across this headband, we always wanna face their feet. So either this is over the face or our shin is across the back of their neck 
doesn't change the math as long as we have the elbow. Finishing belly down is okay, but there's a lot of room. We want to take that room away. This knee slides under. We always turn to face the feet. Right here, see how he's got an option. Um, he was able to clear and look to take the back, but didn't have enough of a connection. Here, if this knee doesn't connect and drives through, you almost always have him roll, and then you end up in a really good spiderweb style armor. Main says it's illegal since Wagner, but before no one really stopped folks most of the time. Yeah, uh, again, I don't know enough about it. Um, I just saw it. It's funny to say. Yeah, you're just a little too high. Active pose to ship the hips backwards as far as you can. I very rarely say this, but don't worry about where the hooks end up. You got to match hip to hip here. See the hip unsquareness, something that's so easy to see on film and we don't always get it. That said, a good wrestler is going to spin. That was a bit of a slam. Main, what do you, what's your take on that? Is that ever going to get called in IBJJF? He is kind of projecting his opponent into the mat there. So too serious penalty. Verbal warnings, one on each side. Very nice. Back to armbar. Good hand fight, two on one. Wrist lock, reverse Kimura. Yeah, don't let him settle into a position like this. Um, I would just start going heels down, hip up, pulling the head, and then launching him this way. Um, don't let him keep everything, his center of balance, on the inside of the triangle he's created. If he's going to make a triangle, push his center of balance anywhere outside of it, and he's going to step that leg down, and then you get to drive and not him. Reset, end of match. End of match. Nice. So score of 11 to 2. So 5, 9. Cool. So we're 9 here. Roll over, close guard. 9 2 win. Um, different match. Cool. Really good stuff. Mr. Process, I really appreciate you sharing us with us um, and letting us review this match.